Welcome back Digital Watch fans to Vintage Digital Watches and to another tech video. And today we'll be looking at LCD. Yes, the one component that we hate to have issues with. And specifically we'll be looking at the rainbowy pattern on the LCD, also known as the screen burn. And whatever we choose to call it, it's those concentrical circles shaped rainbow patterns that we see on the LCD. And on some watches we see them regardless of the angle and uh, I don't have an example like that but I do have one uh, that you can see it from the side and that is also common in watches. And if I tilt the screen just a bit in the right direction you will see it show up. And there you can see it. it's a little bluish in the center and then it's reddish around the edges. So as I said in some watches this is a real pain especially because it tends to pop up in the most interesting watches like the Seiko H239 who is notorious for having those uh, rainbowy patterns on the LCD. And in today's video we are going to see if this is worth fixing and if it's even possible to fix. But before we do that, what is an LCD actually made of? And if we ask the Digital Watch Repair Manual by Luis Anoni, it says that an LCD is a glass envelope filled with a special fluid which rotates polarized light when an electric field voltage is applied to it. And we even have a diagram that shows us an exploded one. So easily we have the top two polarizers we have the two glass elements and then we have the LCD display and you'll notice that the recognizable part is this gl top glass uh, element and you can see here the pads and the individual segments and it has a sister pad which has a continuous element and you can consider this being the ground uh, and this being the plus this will always be this will always be supplied and if you want to activate a certain element you just uh, apply the positive to its associated element. And to make things even simpler we are going to mock build an LCD right now. Okay so remember that we aren't building an actual LCD we are just building a mock one uh, for, the, for the sake of an easily comprehensible uh, example. So we will need the two glass elements that are in the middle. So this is that and this is that. We'll need a top polarizer, we'll need a bottom polarizer. We're also going to need a couple of corks. Uh, we don't have anything to mimic the LCD and we'll need something to etch the pattern on. Now it's very important to understand that this is actually a conductive invisible pattern. Those pads you have at the end of the LCD you know that voltage goes through them and that voltage is supposed to reach uh, each individual segment. So yeah those are conductive. So what they will typically do is they will first uh, choose the pattern. Let's say that this will be our pattern and we are going to have each individual a segment going out to a pad. There we go, we have our pads to each individual segment and then the next element will have a continuous pattern which will be the back plane uh, or the ground for the segments. So that means that this will have a continuous pattern like that and that will go out all of those will be to the same element we're not going to have individual ones because it's just as I said like a ground then what they would do they would glue these two together with a special frit glass frit which is kind of like a glue uh, we don't have any of that so we're just going to mimic this with some silicone smack this on top and here is where the corks come in play they will actually fill the gap in between the two glass layers with a liquid crystal and then they would cork the holes up through which they filled it. 
I mean, you get the point. And then they would add this polarizer in front and this polarizer in the back. And that would be the LCD. Why do they need polarizer? Well, it's because liquid crystal can only bend polarized light. So we need uh, the light coming in to be polarized for the uh, bending effect in the, LC in the liquid crystal to take place. Why do we need the back one? Well, that is because we also have the light reflecting off the silver panel that is usually under the LCD. That light also needs to be polarized. And what actually happens is when a segment is activated, the polarized light will be bent. And you won't be able to actually see it return. So what those segments are actually blocking light. That's what you are seeing. And if we're still here, let's talk about these corks. Uh, and you can see here in this image, uh, those corks are in the corners of the display. Uh, if you ever opened up a really early watch, you would have noticed them uh, under a microscope. And usually those are the starting points for the LCD bleeding because LCD bleeding happens when the liquid the crystal inside gets contaminated. So if there is a small crack in the glue that holds the two glasses together, that liquid will be contaminated with water, uh, with even with air. Uh, and that's the point where it will start to uh, be contaminated and get all black. The blackness you are actually seeing is because of the polarizing filters. And again, that bleeding can also start from the point where the corks are. Uh, but as technology went on, uh, the corks were needed because production uh, technology developed and they had different means of filling it while they applied the two uh, glass elements. Okay, so let's take these to the side and see if we can fix this. So the way we are going to attempt to fix this is by changing the polarizing filters, uh, the one on the top and the one on the bottom, because this is what has been suggested and uh, insinuated by people that that screen burn may be actually only on the polarizing filters. There is no other fix that we could attempt unless we could actually build an LCD from scratch. Let's start off by taking the polarizing filters off. So here we are 15 painstaking minutes later and a lot of scrubbing with isopropanol and we can see that we have this beautiful uh, LCD. You can't see any uh, issues with it no matter which angle we look at it from. So has that burn been removed together with the polarizing filters? Only one way to find out and that is to use new polarizing filters. So, moment of truth. Nothing so far. But we do need two polarizing filters. And yes, there we go. You can actually see the pattern hasn't gone. And this is because the issue is with the liquid crystal. So, if we have any means of replacing that liquid crystal inside, we might be able to fix it but just changing the polarizing filters will not. And you can see uh, the fact that it's a continuous mass of liquid crystal. If I bend it, you can see how it mixes together. And one myth to be debunked is that in an LCD, there is a continuous mass of liquid crystal inside. We don't have each individual segment filled separately with LCD. Thanks for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you're not satisfied by the fact that this can be an actual fix because it actually can't. Uh, and do subscribe because I try to release digital watch related videos as often as I can. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.